it's it's online. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Very excited. It's season seven for our international ground rounds. Today's talk is going to be focused on uh, flaps. And uh, I'm very excited to introduce one of my colleagues. He's a brilliant surgeon, uh, world renowned. It's from Italy, in Subria, what is it? Worldwide new because of his uh, surgical techniques. And what we're going through today is gonna be a, a glance of something that he developed during his career. I'm very excited to introduce you, Mario Cherubino. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, everybody. So um, as, as previously said, today's talk is going to be focused on reconstruction. Mario Cherubino is, uh, uh, was uh, previously part uh, and still part of the, of the team of plastic surgery reconstruction of the Insubra University in Varese. Uh, as you might be aware, Varese is uh, one of the city that uh, uh, guests me for uh, one of my training period. And I'm, I'm very glad to have him uh, on board for today's talk. So Mario, if you could like, if you would uh, introduce your um, um, presentation, I will remind all the attendees that you can type your question. We will reply, we go through all these questions at the end of his presentation. Please Mario, go ahead with, uh, with the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Puya, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, good afternoon and good day for uh, all the people who are watching us. Um, I was wondering, is it okay with the show? Can you see the presentation now, the slides? Everything is fine, everything is fine. Perfect. So today we are going to focus about reconstruction. I'm a plastic reconstructive surgeon and uh, I did all different districts. So I've been a hand surgeon, and the neck reconstructive surgeon. And I was so lucky to work with a wonderful ENT team, the one of in Varese of, with Professor Castelnuovo. And so they were used to give me very big holes in different parts of the hand and neck. And so from there, we developed our way to do reconstruction. The talk of today will be focused on the nose. So if you look on the... Um, definition of the nose, it's the most projecting part above the mouth. So it means that projection, it's the main focus that characterizes the nose. And that's the definition of the English production. In fact, as you can know from Voldemort, it looks really weird because it doesn't have any projection and there is a lack of the nose. So we have to, um, ask ourselves what are the reconstructive um, strategies that we can have in front of a deep defect of the nose. And the first question is, is it a skin defect or is it a full thickness defect? And that's the main reason why we have to choose between two different ways to do the reconstruction. So skin defect can be reconstructed with local flaps. And that's, it's a quite easy reconstruction compared to the full thickness defect. However, it's not so easy always because it depends on the area. A tip area will be reconstructed with certain flap like a balobat flap or with a reconstruction with an asset flap that is called also mashak flap. So we are going to move only the skin from one area to the closest area. However, these flaps are affordable, can be easily re or, uh, reused, and can be used in all the defects. If the defect of the skin is a bigger defect, we have two main techniques. One is the Italian way to do the nose reconstruction. Uh, I don't know if all of you knows, but was described by Talia Cozzi in the uh, during the 16th century. And the biggest idea was to use the skin from the arm and to put in the position of keeping the arm close of your hair for at least three or more weeks. And then the patient can smell perfectly the humped stokes. No, however, it was a very terrible tragedy to 
stay in this position for a long stay, but it was used. For example, I found this picture that was a soldier of the Second World War that was still reconstruct with the Italian method. However, honestly, it's easier to do a reconstruction with the Indian flap also that is nowadays obviously is called the forehead flap that can be combined by medial or lateral forehead flap, however, still the forehead flap. And it represents the best way to do a nose reconstruction. Uh, we see the picture that is in the left side that were a case of one of the father of plastic surgery of Gillis. And however, the method was described by the Indians um, since the first century before Christ and was uh, renewed, was um, fined by English soldiers during the Indian, uh, um, Indian submission of the England. And uh, it was then developed in the uh, UK for a long period. And nowadays represents the best way to do the reconstruction of big defects. As we can see, that's a BCC um, cancer that was on the dorsum of the uh, of the nose and it was also developed down to the tip and a small portion of the columella so several subunit were interesting in this cancer and uh, has menelik described in the late 90s if half of a subunit is enveloped from the tumor, it's best to remove completely the subunit and do a full reconstruction of the subunit. That was the defect. So as you can see the framework, so it means that no cartilage, no part of the bone was involved in the skin tumors because it was skin and it was a BCC. So we do the removing of everything and we decide to reconstruct with a medial um, forehead flap. So it means that it was moved down to the forehead okay. and all the muscle was uh, used to do the reconstruction. And um, in the techniques that I use, I'm used to um, first stage, I'm not using the Manelik technique in three stage, I use the two stage technique. So it means that the first, uh, first time we harvest the flap full thickness, down to the periosteum, saving the periosteum down to the skull. And then we remove the muscle and the fascial gallia after that we see the movement that has been reached. In this way, we are sure about the vascularity of this flap. And as you can see, uh, it was perfectly adopted to reconstruct the defect. And uh, after three weeks, only three weeks, we go back to the OR. It's possible to do even in local anesthesia, the second stage. So it means that the second stage would be remove the pedicle that would connect the forehead down to the nose and then wait for the patient to heal. And that's the final results. Obviously it's not so easy. There are some tips that must be maintained. So it's giving us a good results, but I mean, it's not so easy to do, honestly. Uh, today, I bring my best cases, of course, to show you. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, uh, if it's a full thickness defect, the situation is more complex because there are several layers that are lacking. That's a case that was done with the ENT team in Varese. And as you can see, was a squamous cells tumor that was involving the maxilla. So we planned the 3D reconstruction that nowadays represents uh, the gold standard of the reconstruction of all the bone defect and all of us have to do. And this defect was involving more than the nose, was involving the portion of the upper lip and obviously the anterior part of the maxilla. For this defect, our reconstruction is to do a bone from work and we use um, most of the time the fibula flap and uh, we adapt our fibula flap 
I would like to show you how we do a two-team approach. So in the meantime, when someone is suturing the flap in the position, we do the anastomosis. And comparing to the usual anastomosis, we not do, are not used to go down to the neck. We are used to use the anastomosis here on the angle of the mandible, where you can find easily the uh, marginal nerve that is crossing the arterial and the fascial vein. So you have to be careful in the dissection to not, not doing any um, trouble. However, in this way, you need a short pedicle because for the maxillary reconstruction in our experience could be quite difficult to have a long enough pedicle that is going down to the neck. However, in this case, we did a, a mistake on the pianification. So even if we have a cat cam, the angle of the bone were too tight and it was harvested in the wrong side comparing to the pedicles. So it means that we use the cat cam system, but our pedicle was uh, instead to be in the external portion of the bone was the in, in, a, in the um, inner part of the uh, bone. So it was kinked for most of the time. So when we went up, we discovered that it was not possible to use the plate because it was kinking in the flap. And even if the, uh, our uh, pedicle was long enough, it was kinked and crossed and was not enough blood flow to let it leave. So we decided to put, after several attempts, we put our flap in the neck, we do the anastomosis to save the flap in the neck. We went back to the uh, to home. So we send the patient in the ICQ. We wait 12 hours, see how the flap was leaving after 12 hours was okay inside of the neck. Plan again in a different kinking position. And so we along our pedicle harvesting, that was the defect after 12 hours. So we, we went back to the R the next day. And so we harvest a long um, vein from the leg, so a safena, to have a very smooth angle down to the neck. And so we decide to do a loop. And as you can see in this video, there is the flap, the fibula flap that was connected to the to the neck and also the big loop of the vein that was connected. Once that we were sure that even the big loop was okay, we go up, we bring our loop from the neck up to the face. So in this way, the new position of the fibula flap was not kinked anymore. It was enough to do um, the reconstruction. We do the, again the anastomosis, even up here. So the flap was saved. We change our plan that was completely monitored. It was definitely a different one. However, we were very happy with the final results. But as you can see, this patient has no nose. So it has mandible, it has upper lip, but it still needs the nose. So a full thickness defect of the nose, it's a totally challenging uh, reconstruction because you have the lack of the inner layer and the inner layer is nothing more than the first uh, layer where you can start to build the framework of your nose. If we look on the books, usually they recommend to do a reconstruction with a radial forearm flap. So it means that the inner layer will be the radial flap. After that, the radial will be fixed. You start to do develop the graft from the, of cartilage from the costal cartilage and do the framework. And on top of that, you can put the forehead flap. Or instead of the radial flap, someone else suggests to use the ELT flap. In my experience, the ELT flap is very thick. So it's not possible to do the reconstruction in these cases. And also the radial flap has some drawbacks. First of all, if you do a free flap, then you have to wait for a few months before to starting to put the framework from the costal cartilage, then do the second stage or reconstruction with the forehead flap, then a third stage, you need always the bulking. 
And in our experience, if some uh, infection occurs, you are going to lose all the graft of the coastal cartilage. So it will become a lack, a lack of projection. So you lose projection due a small infection of your graft. Um, it's definitely a good way to do reconstruction out of the nose, but for full thickness reconstruction, remember projection, it's what is the characteristic of the nose is we thought about why instead to do several stage reconstruction, we decide to propose a flap that was well known as M surgeon to do reconstruction of the scaphoid and to do the reconstruction of the nasal bone, nasal framework, and the inner layer in the, in the same flap, put the forehead flap. So that's the flap that we we're thinking about was the medial femoral condyle that was described by Doyle for hand reconstruction. And in Europe was popularized from Heinz Burger that was using it again for scaphoid reconstruction. I went in Austria and we do several scaphoid reconstruction. And the first time that I was harvesting, I break the flap in the middle it bent perfectly and looks like a tend, like a nose bone. And I said, I'm going to use it for the nose. So when finally a patient with a squamous cell carcinoma of the skin that was involving the, um, the bone and the cartilage, as you can see in MRI so of, the, of the nose, and it was planted a full thickness defect of the dorsum and the lateral sides of both sides and the tip of the nose. So in these cases, we decide to use the medial femoral condyle flap to do the reconstruction of the inner layer and the bone layer together with one flap, because these two layers will be done with the periosteum for the inner layer, the bone, from the framework, from the bone and the cartilage. And on top of that, you can put the, the forehead flap. So that's the flap. Skin incision is done in the thigh, in the distal part of the femoral. You harvest on the inferior geniculate artery. That was the uh, defect plan. And that was the aspect of the full thickness defect. As you can see, there is no inner layer, no bone, no cartilage. Uh, part of the tip was sparing in this flap. And that's the aspect of the flap. So because it's made by corticus bone and a small amount of spongious bone, it's very thin flap. It's bone, but very thin with the periosteum that it's very thick, the periosteum of the femoral. So once that you have the bone, you can do a small osteotomy in the center of the bone and it will be bent perfectly like the roof of a church. So as you can see, that was the final aspect. So exactly in this case, and that's the aspect of the flap once that has been put in the nose and you see the pedicle that is going down to the same vessels, to the facial vessel on the angle of the mandible. Of course, if you are lucky to find an angular branch, the angular branch of the nose of the facial vein, you really need a very short pedicle. But in my experience, it's not so easy to find a vein up here in the face. So it's always better to have a long enough pedicle going down here on the, man, on the mandibular part. Uh, on the marginal of the mandible um, in the face. That was the osteosynthesis. We use an uh, orbital um, plate to reconstruct the synthesis. Nowadays, we don't use that anymore. We just put small screw on the lateral sides to step the flap or suturing with vicryl the periosteum that is inner side. So you see the bone, it's outside, it's in the middle. And the, to cover the defect, we finish with the forehead flap that was put on top. So in the side of the periosteum, we reconstruct the mucosa and then the bone, and then on top of that, the forehead flap. That's the final aspect and the long time 
media RAM. And that's the defect. As you can see, there is nothing on the lateral sides. Uh, you see the clips of the pedicle, obviously, the vascular pedicle, but you don't even see the defect of the, uh, of the bone. And that's the endoscopy that is showing uh, you that because the periosteum, it's vascularized, I, I, as you can see in this, in this image, you see that all the mucosa grow on top of that. If you have a flap experience, every time that you leave a living flap in the mouth, it will be muscular, it will be uh, mucosides in a few weeks. That's the aspect of the biopsy of a different case. As you can see, we have, obviously it's not real mucosa, it's not perfectly histology, but it's a, um, a new mucosa. That's another case. Again, was um, the, the nasal spine was removed together with the most of the spine. That's the final reconstructive uh, after the first stage. As you can see, we do a small a bilateral epsilon V uh, flap to do the reconstruction of the upper lip when the defect was done, but there was a lack of the nose, spared the two other part that was uh, still present. And that was uh, the planar reconstruction. We harvest the flap that again, as you can see, it's a small pedicle. It's not. It's lo quite long enough, but the dimension are very small compared to the radial um, to the radial artery. It's a smaller diameter, but it's constant and it's always present. And you can check with a TC scan with an angel TC to see which side has the longest pedicle. There is no difference between the right or the left sides. So you can see with the CT scan, how long is the pedicle and the side, which one you use. So once that you harvest the pedicle, you do the osteotomy in the center, you leave the periosteum integrity from both sides of the bone. So that's why the bone will be vascularized. And then do the anastomosis. In this case, we find a very good uh, angular and fascial vein and uh, uh, artery. So we do the anastomosis in the flap. You can see the blood coming out from the periosteum and from the, uh, from the corticulous bone. And then we harvest also a graft of cartilage and the skin to do the reconstruction of the inner part of the columella. So in this case, we have the flap that was for the dorsum and for the tip and the inner part of the columella reconstructed with the graft of the auricular uh, portion of skin and cartilage to do the reconstruction of the inner part. And on top of that, we put our forehead flap. In this case, we transplant some air down to the columella, unfortunately, but that was the aspect between the stage one and stage two. That was the early final aspect of the nose. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's a nose in our opinion. And the patient was able to do a such a life. And that's a, it's a long follow-up. I think after three years uh, aspect of the nose, as you can see, we were satisfied with the dorsum, the tip and the uh, aspect of the, of the nose. And again, that's the endoscopy of the same patient. In this case, the posterior part of the septum was preserved. In our opinion, it's not necessary to do reconstruction of the septum, but you can see how mucolized it is. This is the flap, that's the periosteum, and it's not even under, uh, possible to see the difference nowadays from the reconstructed periosteum and the original mucosa. That's another case, again, full thickness defect. The, we put again our um, medial femoral condyle flap, do the construction of the inner layer. Uh, again, we find, okay, that's you see the anastomosis. Again, we even here we find in the in the cheek, that's the artery and that's the vein, good section, and the blood was coming out from the bone for a head flap on top of it, final reconstruction and final aspect of the defect with the full thickness reconstruction. And uh, we were very pleased about because it was a long follow-up and stable in the time. So this was our case series that we published on Microsurgical uh, a few times ago. And last year, just during the COVID situation, we start to do some 
anatomical studies uh, to try to do a CAD CAM system to see the TC scan of the knee and to do exactly a projection where to do the um, osteotomies and to see the projection of the bone. That's the aspect on the fascial model of our flap to do the reconstruction of the inner layer. And this was the first CAD CAM reconstruction case that we did in Milano. Um, that's the full thickness defect. Again, the uh, nose, the flap, and the forehead flap on top of it. And that's the portion of flap. I would like to thank you, Puya, for the invitation. And obviously, I invite all the people who are attending to write me. And this was my group. These are all students and residents that were part in uh, plastic surgery Varese that nowadays are um, enjoying the life in plastic surgery and became in the program. And some of my assistants, like Dr. Di Giovanna, Dr. Federico Tamburini, Dr. Andrea Minnina, and Dr. Emanuele and Ferruccio Paganini and Leonardo Garitti and so on, all the students. So thank you very much for the attention and I invite you in the United Emirates, if you ever happen to be here in Abu Dhabi, please feel to find to contact me and I will be happy to show you around the city. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mario, for your uh, kind uh, um, presentation. Of course, uh, would you remind the attendees, uh, what are your uh, email addresses in case they would like to join you? Yeah, of course, it's Mario Cherubino, mario.cherubino at gmail.com. Great, thank you. So we have some time for questions. We have uh, plenty of questions around the world. Let's start with, with the first one. Uh, this, uh, the first one is coming from uh, the Netherlands. Have you considered to analyze nasal mucosa biofilm after surgery? Biofilm, uh, honestly, no. We took some biopsy. So not biopsy, but we just do the uh, regular HMM, but we never thought about to see what are the bacteria on top of that, honestly. So uh, thank you for the suggestion. Uh, next time I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> Second question from Russia. What are the prescriptions for the post-operative care? Oh, that's interesting because as you can see, it's a bird flap. So it means that it's not possible to do the standard monitoring of the flap. However, uh, if you have any device that is helping you to do um, an idea of how the flap is, it will be great because obviously uh, if you have any um, device that is checking about the blood flow in outflow will be helps. In our experience, we were used to do nothing more than the echo Doppler on the sides of the anastomosis and checking how is the flap to do the monitoring uh, flap. Uh, echo Doppler is fine for artery flow, not for venous flow. However, I don't know if you know it, but for us, for bone flap, it's not mandatory to do a venous anastomosis. It's more important that you have an artery flap in there because most of the venous uh, blood flow is coming out from the bone part. So even in these cases, we still now didn't notice any um, loose of the flap. However, our case series, it's very short. We did uh, 12 cases, something like that. So we need to see much more to be sure. And in regards to this, the next question from New Mexico, what would be your suggestion to develop a proper learning curve? On the medial femoral condyle flap? I don't know, he's, he was, uh, you know, it's, it's, it was a, a question. I, I can try to ask, of course, but if you can start to, to analyze whatever you want to. No, so uh, learning curve uh, for microsurgery, it's a quite good, it's, Microsurgery, it's a technique, it's like endoscopy. So it's just a matter of time. How time do you spend doing training on yourself? We do, in Italy with the microsurgery uh, society, we do a very clear um, learning curve. So you need to do a base course that we were used to organize in Varese, where you spend four days learning all the small stuff, how to do the suturing, how is the microsurgical technique, 
going on with the chicken model, that it means ex vivo model, that you start to do in the anastomosis on chicken, and then you have an access to the advanced course that it's a three, week, three weeks course where you do anastomosis on the animal model, living animal model, and it will be on rats that nowadays still represents the best system to do. After that course, I'm sure that you can do every microsurgical anastomosis that you will want to do in your life. So doing the anastomosis, it's good, but still you need to know how to do raise flap and they do the good indication. And that's a fellowship that you will need yeah. to spend. Exactly. The other question is from France. Which program do you use for the preoperative planning? Sorry? What I think that he, he was asking which program you use for the pre-op planning. I think that is uh, referred to which CT scan or uh, um, CAD CAM. Okay. I probably do think that you use CAD CAM. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, so, so uh, for the for the defect, I mean, uh, to see how will be big the defect, I'm learning from the ENTs that it's a soft tissue, so you need an MRI and it's also a TC scan to see the bone defect. But it's the MRI that is going giving us an idea how big will be uh, the final defect. For the reconstructive portion, we do a a uh, CT scan of the knee with an angel CT scan to see exactly which side has the longest uh, pedicle. In one side, the medial femoral, um, the medial femoral condyle pedicle, that is the descended branch of the genicular artery, it could be very short, not that long. So in the other side of the, of the same passion, you find a long pedicle. So you will see how long it is to reach the marginal uh, facial uh, vessels. vessels. Uh, another question from Egypt. What are the contraindications for these types of flaps? Contraindication. But obviously, previous knee surgery, like yeah. knee implants, yeah. is not a good indication. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, uh, but also, I mean, the biggest question is try never open the knee joint. I'm a plastic surgeon, so I'm used to go there. When we need to do a scaphoid reconstruction, we must open the knee joint because we need a small portion of the cartilage to do the reconstruction of the scaphoid. But in the nasal reconstruction, you have to reach the, the age of the knee where you can feel with your tongue down in the knee, you easily find the age, never go down to the age, but harvest the bone from the age of the, of the joint down to the, to the uh, surgical, uh, surgical, um, colletto chirurgico, surgical, uh, um, I don't remember, so down to the uh, sharp, sharp part of the femur. So you can harvest a quite big part of bone, honestly. It's like a, a palm, dimension of the palm of the knee. So it's quite big, but you never go too proximal in the harvesting the bone or otherwise you can have a fracture of the femur. Okay. Another question, I think one of the last from Greece, what are your suggestions for the reconstruction of the nasolabial angle? Oh, nasal labial angle, um, doing two times because the nasal labial angle needs to be a defecting secondary surgery. So let's heal in good way. And then after a few months, you are sure about the flap reconstruction that you put on top of that and do an incision exactly where you want to do a very visible part and the defecting everything, remove all the fat from the inner layer and suture it again. So it will be more technical. As, as an ENT surgeon, I, I have to be honest, say the next, in the last two years, because of the pandemic situation, we were, uh, we were forced to stop 
the general surgery and give priorities, prioritization to other type of cancers. And in regards to, for example, any kind of superficial cancer of the nose, I found out very, very interesting the collaboration with my plastic surgeon, which I work on with, and I've learned a lot from them. Actually, we we doing and uh, nowadays lots of those reconstruction under local anesthesia, as I should say. And I found out the importance, for example, of the Doppler when you want to find out that the vessel that you need yes. and it's very fascinating how can you reach to and, and raise those flaps and reach to things that I never thought about it. We yeah. recently did one and, and uh, for example, I, I've learned to do VY flaps or, or forehead yeah. flaps. Sometimes you really can do stuff un- unimaginable, like crazy stuff even under local anesthesia. Yes, so in absolutely. regards to this, and in regards to this, here's come the question of these uh, of these colleagues from Spain. What are the limits of uh, surgery under local anesthesia? That's a good question. In my opinion, there are very few. I'm used to do a lot of local anesthesia reconstruction. However, the main limits is to be sure how long will be the surgery. The full head flap to do perfectly sometimes they require you too long time. So a patient can stay in the right position for one hour, one hour and 50 minutes and working on the, that will be enough. But to do a forehead flap with all the dimension, all the measure, sometimes takes you up to two hours, three hours. So in that cases, I will not recommend to do, and I prefer to go for general anesthesia. So my indication is compliance of the patient is the most important thing. You know, uh, in my experience, age patients can be very easily compliant compared to young nervous patients that cannot stay in that position. And uh, see if you have a good um, anesthesiology that can give you um, sedation. Otherwise, it will be difficult to let the people stay in that position for one hour. So these are my indications. Once that you are sure about how long will be the surgery, you can choose between the two of them. Great. Thank you, Mario, for all the presentation. Of course, if or anyone interested, you can watch it again in our uh, social media platform. You know, of course, subscribe on, 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 uh, on YouTube and you can uh, easily get access to it. Uh, I would thank you again, and I would take this opportunity to uh, remind the upcoming event, 26th of October, is going to be a live surgery, Narayan Janaki Ram. Of course, you do know that um, we always like also to involve us live surgery events. Next upcoming event is going to be focused on pituitary surgery, and we, we will go from scratch to address pituitary surgery. Thank you, Mario, for being with us, and I really Bye. hope to have you to have you for the upcoming events too. And hopefully in case, would you like to suggest any course that you think that would be helpful for juniors to address those those pathologies and surgical techniques? Yes, there is a very good high level course called Advanced Microsurgical Course in Groningen. Uh, we organize it every year and it's for international faculties and to raise the flap, and also I, I do rising the medial femoral condyle flap there. And uh, also they have an uh, interesting training in lymphatic um, surgery that I don't think that you like as a EMT surgeon. However, it's very good. So advanced microsurgical course, Groningen. It's organized by Oldenburg and Groningen stuff. Sure. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Stay safe and I'll see you on 26th. Bye-bye. Absolutely, ciao. 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 ciao.